Hi friends, what comes to mind when you hear the word quackery? Well, when I was a Jehovah's Witness for more than two decades, I never would have associated this word with the organization that I so faithfully served. Today I'm going to introduce you to some Watchtower characters and their offerings, and you can determine for yourself if this is a fitting description for them. So let's jump right in. Today we will focus on Clayton J. Woodward. In prior videos, I had mentioned this book, The Finished Mystery, and how that Watchtower claimed it was written by Russell from Beyond the Grave. But actually, how was it really written? Well, the 1993 Proclaimers book tells us. It says, Brother Russell had been unable to produce this volume during his lifetime, though he had hoped to do so. Following his death, the executive committee of the, of the society arranged for two associates, Clayton J. Woodworth and George H. Fisher, to prepare this book which was a commentary on Revelation, Solomon, and Ezekiel. And then it says under objects of attack that it states that the Bible students energetically distributed the new book, The Finished Mystery. By the end of 1917, the printers were busy on the 850,000 edition. The, the sale of the seventh volume is unparalleled by the sale of any other book known in the same length of time accepting the Bible. Wow, that's pretty interesting. If you've watched my video on Watchtower Shady Friends, you'll see exactly what was written in, in this section of Revelation in that book. And to, to, to read this, but that by 1993, that Watchtower was still reporting about this book is just amazing. So Proclaimers tells us that Woodworth was chosen to complete the 1917 book, The Finished Mystery, and the society loved the end result so much that they made him editor of the Golden Age ma magazine, later called Consolation, from the first issue in 1919 through 1946. And then, of course, that later became the awake. Now the word awake is loaded language, but that's the topic of another video. So let's take a look at the 1913 convention, souvenir convention notes. And I wanna focus on a talk that Clayton J. Woodworth gave at this convention where he talks about some of his troubles. Now this was before the finished mystery was written and of course before Watchtower made him editor of the Golden Age magazine. So take a look at this under the talk, The Vow. It says, he's ex explaining, well, the matter went on. There was a time for five consecutive nights when I never slept a wink. Then came a time when the strain was too much my mind became unbalanced and I came directly under the influence of evil spirits. So much so that for three days I was completely under demonical control, as was Mrs. Eddy when she wrote Science and Health. So in 1913, Woodworth, when he was a respected elder, admitted that he was under demon possession. Four years later, he finishes the finished mystery, claiming it's the posthumous work of Brother Russell, written after his death, which is necromancy, which is forbidden by scripture. And then he becomes the editor of the Consolation magazine for 20-ish, 25 or so years. And he was promoted by Russell, by Rutherford. Take a look at the inside cover of one of these Golden Age magazines to see who was the vice president, Nathan Knorr. You'll see Clayton Woodworth president, Nathan Knorr vice president. Nathan Knorr was a future president, probably, considered a faithful and discreet slave of 
the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. I gotta admit, that surprised me. All right, you know what? I could see R Russell being nutty and Rutherford being nutty because we knew that and all of the, uh, these other shady characters, but nor that surprised me to read this. So Nathan Knorr had to be familiar with Clayton Woodworth. He had to be familiar with the 1913 convention notes where he admitted he was demonized. He had to be familiar with the book of Revelation commentary in the finished mystery where Woodworth wrote all those crazy things that he did. Anyway, I only previewed a few of the articles in the Golden Age magazine, but uh, it was pretty shocking. You know, I compared it to the 24-hour news channels that we have today, which are filled very rarely with good news, mostly frightening news, news-worthy articles and reports that cause people anxiety. These magazines had very similar contents. One major point in the articles that I had read in the 20s or so was propaganda that aluminum cooking utens utensils caused horrible food poisoning. The articles that I read utilize such words as slaughter, cockroach castles, pimples, bacteria, thousands of deaths, and even a case of cancer of the rectum. Of course, as is Watchtower's custom, they did not cite any sources that I could go and verify if these things were actually taking place, but I doubt they were, and if they were, I doubt they were attributed to aluminum cooking utensils. But can you imagine how this affected the delicate minds of the readers, the Bible students at that time? Those who maybe had sick children and were heeding Watchtower's counsel as to what they needed to do. So let's take a look at a Golden Age magazine in 1937. Poisons formed by aluminum cooking utensils. In the red box there it says, a friend of mine after having 17 carbuncles threw out his fancy aluminum ware. The carbuncles disappeared. Another fed his dog from an aluminum dish. The dog died from a cancer of the face. Two others each gave a dozen young ducks water and aluminum pans and all the ducks died in less than two weeks. You could see all the imagery here and in the picture it says all aboard for the tomb. Another more serious delusion was that doctors were agents of Satan. Now this is written by or edited or written by Woodworth, who had a problem with demon possession himself. So another more serious delusion here, he's saying, is that doctors were agents of Satan. Yeah. Readers of the Golden Age know the unpleasant truth about the clergy. They should also know the truth about the medical profession, which sprang from the same demon-worshipping shamans, doctor priests, as did the doctors of divinity. Fudge. These readers know the truth about the politicians who also descended from the same line of children of God or children of the sun as did the priests and medicine men. And then notice there in the same article, um, a, a, another article called Odd Fellows and Masonic Prayers. The Golden Age magazine, the Watchtower's position was that they denied that germs cause di disease. Take a look at this. The insert says, through the kindness of the Mellon Institute, we present Dr. Love Germ, the eminent scientist examining the deadly hocus pasi bacillus. In the circle is a picture of the same bacilli demagnified about 17 times. Notice this other Golden Age magazine in 1926. Do you see we are in red where I wrote up at the top left creepy font? That 
font that I used is actually called creepy. Just think like, just say for instance, if you wanted to send out an invitation to a Halloween party and you wanted a scary looking, you wanted the words to look scary. So you would choose a font called creepy. That font I used was called creepy and I put that there because I want you to compare the words in the Golden Age magazine to the creepy font called creepy to show you they wanted it to look scary. War, famine, pestilence, revolutions, and all kinds of crazy stuff that they're talking about. But look at that. They wanted to scare the readers. Over to the right there, it says, tonsillectomy is called a minor operation. If so, getting well is a double major. If any overzealous doctor condemns your tonsils, go and commit suicide with a case knife. It's cheaper and less painful. Could you imagine a young Bible student couple with a sick child who has tonsillitis and the doctor tells them they need the tonsils removed? I, Look, I have my tonsils and I'm grateful that I still have my tonsils. I don't believe my siblings have their tonsils, but that's a different, that's a different matter. What was going through the delicate minds of the Bible students at this time? Go and commit, commit suicide instead? That is horrifying. I find that absolutely horrifying. So here's a little bit more of quackery. They claimed that disease was caused by wrong vibrations and they marketed a machine called the electronic radio biola. In their opinion, this machine provided healing by sending radio waves which caused wrong vibrations. Look at the arrow. Man a machine, doctor asserts to convention, tells American surgeons 28 trillion wet batteries form the human body. Disease is wrong vibration. From what has thus far been said, it will be apparent to all that any disease is simply an out of time condition, out of tune condition of some part of the organism. In other words, the affected part of the body vibrates higher or lower than normal. It has a different vibratory rate than the rest of the body. It's out of balance. It is diseased. And then it talks about diseased tissues radiate more energy. The next article, Golden Age Magazine, 1925. The electronic radio biola. I have named this new discovery, which I believe will be epoch, epoch, epochal. I don't know that word or how to say that word, in the history of the treatment of disease in which I am exclusively announcing in the golden age prior to its general publication elsewhere, the electronic radio biola, which means life renewed by radio waves or electrons. Biola automatically diagnoses and treats disease by the use of the electronic vibrations. The diagnosis is 100% correct, rendering better service in, or how great automatically carries them into the biola. Anyway, it goes on and on and on. Well, at that time, there was a good old boy by the name of Roy Goodrich. And he was so highly respected by the Bible students that the society allowed him to write an article in the Golden Age magazine, which I think was about five years later. So check out what he had to say. He writes, in this article, proof is set that the diagnostic machine of Dr. Albert at Abrams is nothing more and nothing less than a complex Ouija board. That this said diagnostic machine can, cannot possibly be used to diagnose disease unless the operator thereof is a spirit medium. And, the, and furthermore, that the whole theory known as the electronic reactions of Abrams or the ERA is an absolute farce, unproved and unprovable, the first scientific evidence in its favor, net yet never yet having been advanced. When you read how this device actually worked, you can see how immediately any person would consider it some similar to a Ouija board. I, I think they held like these uh, cans or something like that. I couldn't find a picture of it. If somebody has a picture of it, please um, send it in or, or put it in the comments because I'd love to take a look at it. But anyway, the patient was told to write his or her name down on a piece of paper and a tiny, piece of that paper like a with an, a a dot of the ink was put into the machine 
And then the machine, or rather the operator, then somehow answered yes or no questions about the patient's health, reading the electronic oscillations of the patient's organs based on this dot of ink. That's divination, okay, you guys? It also answered questions about people's life expectancy. Anyway, guess what happened to Mr. Good Old Boy Roy Goodrich? Well, he wrote a book, and according to the book called Demonism and the Watchtower, he was disfellowshipped. Take a look at that. Well, some years later in 1953, new light came out and a January 8th article in The Awake on pages 12 and 14 talks a little bit about this machine. Radionics is considered either quackery or a mystery by many persons. This is because the elaborate machines used to diagnose and treat disease work for some operators but not for others. Both those who call radionics quackery and those who call it a mystery point to Dr. Albert Abrams and his strange Abrams box, said to be based on his theory that each disease has its own vibratory rate or its own radiation and that each drug possesses the same radiation as that of the disease it cures. How did this controversial machine work? It talks a little bit about how it works. And then look at that. References to primitive Ouija boards in the same article. New Light exposed this to be demonic, proving what good old boy Goodrich determined right away. Guess he was disfellowshipped for no reason, but I'm sure it had to have been the best thing that ever happened to him in his life. It took Watchtower many, many years to reach the same conclusions that Roy Goodrich was able to determine in a matter of hours. If Goodrich and now the society are right about the spiritistic or demonic nature of this machine, then Watchtower leaders were involved in spiritism, divination, and magic for several decades, along with many of their higher up leaders. Just to throw this in, take a look at this because magic is real. It's practiced by witches and warlocks today. And it has different categories. Look at one of the categories of magic, vibration magic. Friends, this endorsement of medical quackery put the health of many in jeopardy. Their most recent medical position in this regard is their current ban on blood transfusions. These Golden Age magazines are filled with testimonials of mystery cures by this machine. I just there was only so much I could really include in this YouTube, but hey, go and look for yourself. How sad to see the iron grip that these Watchtower leaders had on their followers. But could this quackery happen again? Is it still happening? What are your thoughts on this picture in this May 15th, 1999 Watchtower? You see, I guess the governing body members had gone to Cuba and they presented gift Bibles to the leaders, public officials, and they signed the gift Bibles. Now listen, I've given many Bibles to people. and Some of them were, were gift Bibles. The gift Bibles that I had presented to people had on the inside page, this gift is presented to so-and-so by so-and-so. So I may have filled that out. This is to Mary from my name. Only as a memory, only so that I could maybe write some favorite scriptures as an attempt to explain to them why I was giving them the Bible. But look at this scripture, uh, sorry, look at this picture. 
Think of when an, an author writes a new novel, New York Times best-selling novel, and to, the way they promote their novel is they go around the country, they go around the world, and have book signing events. They have their table, they have their books, they have their glass of water, and they sign the books. They autograph the books. It's a book signing event. This basically signifies the fact that this is their book, they're signing it, they're owning it, they're authoring it, and it even makes the books more valuable because it's signed by the owner, by the author. When I presented gift Bibles to people, I never did it at a book signing event. It was something personalized. The Bible that I presented to them may have never made it more valuable, as far as monetarily more valuable. It was a gift. But take a look at what these governing body members are doing here. They have their water. Their water is there. A bottle of water is there on the desk. This was an event. This was a big a promotional event. And they even had a photographer take a picture and published it in this magazine. I tell you all of that because I find this picture offensive. You may not. I don't know where they think or how they think they can autograph God's Holy Bible. I just find it to be blasphemy. Anyway, I say that because let's never forget this article. November 2013, Watchtower, page 20. Number three, at that time, the life-saving direction that we receive from Jehovah's organization may not appear practical from a human standpoint. All of us must be ready to obey any instructions we may receive, whether these appear sound from a strategic or human standpoint or not. Now is the time for any who may be putting their trust in secular education, material things, or human instructions to adjust their thinking. This is horrifying to me. My family members are still in this organization. I don't know what this means. I just hope it was an isolated event that they put in there and not indicative, soft disclosure programming of something that's to come. I don't know, but I just tie these two things together that these governing body members think they can autograph a Bible and then tell their followers that they must obey even if it doesn't seem right. Well, in Jesus's day, the religious leaders, the governing body of Jesus' day were called the Pharisees. And what did Jesus think of the Pharisees? Matthew 23, 15 tells us, Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass land and sea, sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Devotion, worship, is for Christ and Christ alone. Jesus gave us all instruction that we need in the Word of God. The Bible is inspired and it's good for everything that we need. Absolutely everything. Not the governing body members. They don't tell us what to do. Friends, put your faith and trust in Jesus today. It's a simple prayer. He reads your heart. Between you and him, repent of doing things your ways. Change your mind and turn towards Jesus. He will save you and you will know that you have eternal life. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing and sharing my videos. And I hope you have a great day.